browsing some vintage Archie comics. Hey everyone, it's VM Campos, comic book fan. Welcome to the latest episode of the weekly VM Campos Comic Book Club. This is a series where I review comic books new or old from my collection. This week I want to go way back in time to some vintage Archie comics from the 50s. I got a couple of Archie comics recently from eBay, and I'm going to take a long loving look at each of these comics page by page, give you some of my thoughts and so forth. So jump to the various points in the description if you want to jump around in the video. But if you're a true comic book fan, you're going to watch this video from beginning to end and give me thumbs up. Give me all the thumbs up for Archie. Do you simp Archie? Just like me, if you do, click like down there. So let's talk about the comics. Little background info, I bought both of these comics off of eBay. Here we have Pep Comics number 128 and Pep Comics number 132. This is July and this is April 1958-1959. And uh, I wanted to get them for various reasons, for the art, for the gentle stories, and just to have some cool vintage comics in my collection, because I love the whole history of comic books. I grew up reading them from the 80s to the 90s, stopped for a little while, stopped again in the 2010s, and I'm back full force. So I got these off of eBay. As a matter of fact, in the same comic lot, I got Marvel's version of Archie. Not, not really, but sort of. Here we have Millie the Model, so where Archie comics were focused more on Archie Andrews and the girls around him, here we had Millie the Model, which was a female-focused type of comic, and you would be forgiven if you think that that is Archie, and maybe that's even Betty. Not really. But here we have famous artist Dan DiCarlo, who also worked on Archie comics. So we'll look at all three of these. Check the description as I jump to each one of them. And we're going to have a fun time looking at the uh, golden age of comic books. First of all, with issue number 128 from July, you can see it's uh, in uh, poor condition. Well, you know, the cover's not detached or anything like that, but it's got water stains, it's got chipping, it's got yellowing, and then some kid 50 years ago wrote on it. And it's just part of the charm, but look, look at this huge stain across the whole thing here. So back in the day, it wasn't just Archie with his own Archie comics. He actually started at Pep Comics, number 22 or so, 1941 or so. I'll put the info up on the screen here. But here we have 120 issues later, and basically he's the main star of the book, along with his with his regular comics of the time, like Archie's Pal, Archie's Girls, and like so many Archie comics back in the day. Ten cents, comic code approved. And here we have one of the many gags here. Uh, here we have Archie totally simping for Veronica. Uh, but Veronica, how can you be jealous of that green-eyed redhead in the beige dress with a beauty mark under her right eye? I never even gave her a second look. Uh, as we look through these comics, they're actually a little bit more hornier than you thought, than you would than you would think about from something so old, but we'll see. We, and this is more of an anthology because we also have a variety of other stories here. We've got Katie Keene, the fashion queen, Wilbur, Pat the Brat, Little Jinx, and of course Archie, back when his uh, buck teeth were incredibly pronounced. Uh, a little bit less here, but definitely here. This is also uh, Archie Club Pen Pals page. So amazing art. So let's browse the book. This, I believe, is Dan DiCarlo art throughout. If not, I'll put it up on screen. But one of the great things about browsing comics of the various ages is to also look at their extra material, such as ads and so forth. And here we have, look, these prices without cost as a member of the American Youth's Sales Club. Pause it and check that out for yourself to, to see about all of these amazing things that all the boys and girls wanted, such as a coffee pot. And then we've got the main story. We can see the Indicia down at the bottom here, Pep Comics, July 1958, Volume 1, number 128. All of that info right there. Really interesting to look at just to see um, info of a bygone age. Then the main story begins. Basically, Mr. Weatherby, the principal, wants uh, Reggie and Archie to be uh, hall monitors, to be narcs. So, okay, they, they, get, a, they get their power trip, and then they... Uh, are kind of in control of it all. Archie comics are comical comics, because back in the day, they were the funnies. They weren't as dark and gritty as they eventually became. Um, so I love looking at these old Archie comics. I love the penmanship and the and the drawings and just the characters and the layouts. Uh, layouts can be a little bit basic, but the art and the expressions are amazing and the anatomy. And even though this was a time where um, comics were really hampered by the by the Comics Code Authority, they, they still managed to make uh, Betty and Veronica pretty sexy here and there, and um, curvy and cute and everything, and just uh, influencing a generation of 
uh, of boys to like girls, or maybe secretly girls to like girls, or even boys to like boys. So you never know how it was back in the day after it was all just under the covers. And here's another example where some kid, I'm pretty sure some kid drew all over his face to make this look like that. But anyway, we've got a bunch of action going on, everyone's freaking out, what are you gonna do about it, Weatherby? And then eventually he uh, kicks out uh, Reggie and Archie as hall monitors, hilarity ensues. Let's go adventuring on a US Royal bike tire. So, yep, bicycle tire advertisement from United States Rubber. I bet if you still owned stock in that, you'd be a millionaire. And the next ad here, Dilton. It's a bet. So here we have Archie, Archie versus Dilton, uh, Dilton Doyle. Um, and uh, it's basically a test of wills, a test of wits, and Archie defeats him first. But then Dilton defeats him back. And this is just a big, it's just a simple two page spread and amazing art. Backgrounds aren't amazing, but it's more about the main characters. Although I do like this final scene here where it shows that um, Archie is defeated all the way down into the night. What'll I do, Pop? Two things, Archie pay Dilton his money and give up gambling. Sage advice. We've got some ads over here. Here's where, unfortunately, my copy of this book is uh, extremely destroyed because this is missing a few pages. Unfortunately, I did not pay a lot for it, but I would have wanted to have a complete comic, although it's not complete, because I believe there were also uh, cutout dolls or things that you could cut out, especially in the Millie the Model one. That one's not complete, unfortunately. And so here's a page that's kind of floating around here. I'm 99% sure it goes this way in the order. That means it's missing one sheet over here of two pages. So I'm missing something because then we then it goes on and here we have little jinx a skating sensation just a one page thing here all just one one joke read it for yourself laugh along as well as they were doing way back in 1958 and then moving on to the uh, archie annual number 10 going on for 10 years out of this world the new archie annual but still at a down to earth price 35 cents in canada Moving on, we have a Betty story. This one's actually really funny. Uh, again, this amazing artwork. We have um, someone coming to date Betty, but she's getting hooked up with him as a blind date. And she's like, okay, I'm going to make myself look horrible because I don't want to date some guy unless he's hot like me. And Jughead says, yep, totally great idea. Capital smashing. So she gets all ghetto for, for the date. And wouldn't you know it, the date is actually hot. And that picture's old because he had his glow up. And then now the date is off because he's like, uh, yeah, I don't want to date someone so basic. I'm out of here. So he goes off to, uh, Betty goes off to say, okay, Archie, well, I actually do want to have a date with you. And he's like, well, I've already got my own plans. And so does Veronica. And everyone's got their own plans. So, oh, no, I'm dateless this weekend. And so she takes out her revenge on Jughead. And again, this is kind of damaged and detached, but it goes on that. And we go on to Laurie, a cheerful earful. This is only a single page. And there were more characters than just Archie, Betty and Veronica, or whatever Riverdale has you believe. There were just many characters in the Archieverse. Some long forgotten, like the whole uh, Wilbur character. And there's basically just more copies of the exact same character over and over. No, that's not Betty and Veronica. That's a couple of different girls. No, that's not Archie, that's Wilbur. Pretty funny. They could just redo the same character over and over. Amazing ads, of course. Check those out there. Zoom in, see what you can get, such as these guns for like a dollar and such. Those were the days. And sometimes not the best of days. Here we have the Archie Club News, where people that just love Archie can chat with each other, and there's prizes and all that stuff. So that's pretty amazing. You should bring that back. Popsicles, bicycles, prizes, drawing contests. Ooh, those look so tasty. I'm sure they were not full of so many chemicals like they were eventually. And then we go over to Pat the Brat. So it's a one page Pat the Brat, which is obviously a Dennis the Menace analog, but it's different because he's got a red suspender outfit, whereas Dennis is blue. And Dennis has blonde hair and he's got black hair. So totally different, legally bindingly different. And we've got another little Jinx story. This is more of a multi-page epic where one of the bullies is like being a bully and laughing and stuff. But uh, then of course they uh, trick him by making him think that he's invisible and then they totally defeat his poor underdeveloped intellect. And then uh, we get the end. Here's another pen pal 
uh, sort of thing. And I wonder if these addresses still work. Write to them, tell them VM Campo sent you, and tell me how it goes. Did you meet a brand new pen pal? Imagine getting to know these delightful animal children. So we get these cool little postcards for only 10 cents where it teaches you all about the uh, animal children, like, like these cute little leopards. And the comic book ends where you can get a miniature monkey or a free miniature dog chihuahua. Interesting, but that's how things were back in the day and you can get them from the mail order. All right, let's check out the next comic. Here we have Pep Comics from several months later. This is number 132. Check out this, uh, this cover. Uh, the little kid originally drew all over her to change her outfit. How come the boy's nicknamed Denise Snake Hill? She's got plenty of curves. Again, these are hornier than you actually think. And uh, yeah, this, uh, these classic artists, uh, some of them on the side were actually doing artwork for more mature publications. And I'm gonna do a video on that coming up soon, so don't forget to subscribe. But they were then, of course, supplementing their main income through just, you know, G-rated comics, code approved comics. And in this particular story, once again, we've got some Katie Keen, the fashion queen stories. Wilbur, Pat the Brat, Little Jinx, and Archie, plus more fan club stuff. Let's look at 132, and this one is from April 1959. Got another cool ad here at the beginning. The secret weapon you can have. Learn, you know, martial arts, uh, learn drawing, and oh, there's like a naked girl right there. So how about hypnotizing or dancing? All for a very, very low price. Amazing. The main story starts, and then here we've got some booties wiggling right away. The principal asks Archie, what in the world is wrong with those girls? Hula hoop, sir. Come again? Too much of this sort of thing. And then he does a little booty shake as well. And then we see more of this booty shaking down the hallway. It gets to be a habit. Ought to be put to stop, sir. Nonsense. It's a harmless pursuit and it keeps them in shape. Man, I can't argue that point. Once again, these are way hornier than you, than you think. But it was all good nature. Get your mind out of the gutter. So then we've got, yeah, the thing about the hula hoop and uh, Reggie and Archie as always. And remember, Archie comics are comical comics. Mr. Weatherby then gets harassed by the hula hoop. This is a hilarious position. Oh, look, he's inventing the position decades before the current um, position that uh, is trending at the moment. It's probably not even trending by the time this video comes out, but you know what I mean. And more hula hoop hijinks. These things are a menace. Hilarity ensues. The end. More prizes. Pat the Brat. This one's hilarious. Uh, let me cover up the, the, the twist ending that no one would ever see. Wait till I catch that Percy. I'll get even with him for smearing my bicycle seat with glue. I know I can lick him. Sometimes I don't know my own strength. And just goes on and on about he's gonna beat his ass. Percy, now you're gonna get it. Oh, Pat. He's chasing him and chasing him. I'm gonna get you. It won't be long now, Percy. Ha, I've got you. Put up your fists. And then of course, bam, sock, pow, etc. Oh, I wasn't all, I wasn't all wrong. I did run faster than Percy. There he is completely curb stomped the end. How did that get passed by the censors? Wouldn't the censors have said, do not show depictions of little children getting brutally beaten? But I guess because it was child versus child, that's okay. More ads over here too. Hit Parade Records. So oh, here's so Columbia House ripoff back in the day. And got two new big books for your Archie series: Betty and Veronica Annual and Jughead Annual. Lots of fun stuff. Again, this has got missing some stuff missing over here. So there's some story point missing. Little Jinx with the snowman with Dad coming home. All that stuff. I think this is missing a page because I don't see the the end. But it seems to be attached here, but I guess that's the end of the story. And then we get over here, you can get some amazing uh, photos of Elvis Presley and so forth uh, for 25 cents. Got the Archie News, the Fan Club, Maggie, the Maggie Award, 1958, 150 Civil War Soldiers. So you can keep recreating to your heart's content the epic loss of the traitors' dogs of the Confederacy. Fun. Then we move on to Wilbur, Beauty, or the Beast. And so 
amazing art, like I said, the, the, just the, the line work, it's so clean and simple, which would influence decades of artists later, like in Europe, with their own clean line style. Here we have two of the guys arguing about how, yeah, women look great when they dress themselves up and put makeup on and everything, and like, hashtag, no makeup, no filter. Uh, and then they're saying, yeah, you know, we can look nice even without uh, our extra makeup and so forth. Let's have a bet on it. So everyone tries to get in on the bet to win in various ways. There's a little bit of a cheeky, almost nudity here where she's taking off her clothes and you see her slip, her undergarment. And then I really like this right here. I like her, I like the, the hair over her eyes. That's a really cute look. And then even this, this look looks, looks really nice. So here she is with her beauty mud mask on and everything. And then that, of course that terrifies the friend, but then the boys are coming and she gets locked out of the house. Oh no, I'm gonna lose the bet. And then they do find her and catch her and they're all terrified and throwing rocks at her and like, get her, get the monster. Linda, go get the police. There's a horrible fiend trying to get at Laurie, hurry. We'll guard our Laurie with our lives. That beast won't get by us. It ends right there, reminding you that Archie comics are comical comics. And they'll also send you an exploding army hand grenade. Exact replica. Don't worry about it. It's just a replica. Uh, but this real tank, six feet long, for $4.98, is completely real. Battle the commies with it. It ends with a fun dates. Fun dates and music with Terry and Dottie, which is an ad but a comic at the same time for these amazing rollerblades. It's the Chicago Roller Skates Company. And that's PEP 132. Lastly in this video, let's take a look at Marvel's version of Archie Comics. Archie Comics, of course, are their own entity, separate from Marvel and DC. And here we have an early, early Marvel comic, even though you don't see Marvel Comics in the corner, presented by Stan Lee, whatever. This is the progenitor. We had Timely, we had Atlas Comics, and then eventually Marvel Comics. And this is a character that, when it became Marvel Comics, continued to be published as Marvel Comics. Millie the Model, the Blonde Bombshell. This is February issue number 75 from 1957. This is actually older than the two I just showed you here at 10 cents. And it's the same sort of idea. It's young people. It's about relationships. It's about gentle comedy. It's very heterosexual on the surface, but you know, we can find the actual meaning if we look carefully. Uh, and this is a little bit more working adults, and it's more focused on Millie, the, the female lead, rather than an Archie comic with the male lead. And jokes such as, gosh, Millie, I could look at you all night. And then the roommate, you already have. And there it is, pretty late at night. Signed by Dan DiCarlo, as I said, also worked on official Archie comics. And that's why the art might be very reminiscent of an Archie comic. What I also found very interesting, as we will see in the main story, uh, they usually don't have a lot of credits about who worked on what. But of course, the biggest credit is by Stan Lee. So here's Stan Lee working on Millie the Model. Years before, we got the Fantastic Four, the Amazing Spider-Man, the Incredible Hulk, Iron Man, etc. Um, Stan Lee was working on girls' comics. So if you want to know more about the history of comics, um, it's a big, beautiful history out there to learn. And hopefully this video will kind of teach you a little bit about it about that time. And like I said here, the Indicia, this is from 1957. Well, actually it says copyright 1956, but 1957. So we'll go with the earlier date of 56. So basically we've got Millie, she's a model at a modeling agency. Agency. There's the uh, quippy redhead, and then her her boyfriend Clicker, obviously a nickname, I guess. And what was really cool is that people could send in their fashion ideas and they would be published. The kids could send in their fashion ideas and they would be drawn in the comic books with no compensation, I'm sure. But then they are credited down here. Millie's Fashion by Sandra Shaw, 2125 Clifton Road, Memphis, Tennessee. And Chili's Fashion by Bonnie Shelley, 233 Beechwood Boulevard, Wintersville, Ohio. So we've got Millie, we've got Chili, we've got Clicker. They work at a fashion agency. She's always pretty bitchy, but uh, she gets her comeuppance here and there. Then we've got the roommate, Daisy. And again, this is this is sexier than you would think. Really curvy girls and handsome guys, and 
revealing outfits and such and you just kind of wouldn't expect that obviously you're not going to see nudity or anything like that but you see a little bit more than you would you would think in something from 1957. So anyway the story here is that Jilly gives Millie some advice about being hard to get and so forth so like sorry I don't have time for a date clicker so he she kind of rejects him a few times and, and then here he is with a very angst-filled frame where he's like well I want to date her but I don't want to roll up on her so I'll give her her space uh, more progressive than you would think also so he's like okay I guess you don't like me anymore I'm out of here and like no wait a minute I do love you it's all a mistake and Chili led me astray and I should have listened to Daisy and so forth everything works out don't worry don't worry they still get back together in the end next story again this is by Stan and Dan so before Stan Lee was partnered up with Jack Kirby or Steve Ditko here he is partnered up with Dan DiCarlo Stan Lee so just more of this um, modeling world of things more of a girl focused comic in theory and so here we have you get a hundred dolls for one dollar isn't that kind of scary to have 100 dolls staring at you at night especially that one but it's only a dollar, so that's a good price. And over here, this is uh, one of the many places where unfortunately the comic is not complete because we also had uh, cutout dolls. You could cut out the character and put clothes on them. So they were in their underwear, but it wasn't like thongs and bras. It was these very uh, conservative slips and uh, like uh, bustiers and such. And then you would paste the, uh, the outfits on top of the... Uh, the, the, the characters. But once again, we have these credits outfit by Dorothy Roberts in New York. And so it's missing some stuff over here, a new plot, but then that one kind of ends. And then we have here some uh, creepy guy totally in love, but she fends him off. Chili always mean and plotting. There's the boss, a Clark Gable, handsome stud of a man. That one is also just a single page, uh, and this is a single page comic that uh, is all self-contained. And you get a lot for your for your money, right? Ten cents gives you like seven stories from beginning to end with cute girls to look at and fun jokes to laugh at and creepy dolls to have nightmares from. And then <laughs> we've got uh prose stories on a diet you can read that on your own i don't think it's gonna turn out how you think but unfortunately there's a whole page missing here yes it's got rusted staples it's from 1957 what do you expect and so the the ending story is missing here's my challenge in the in the comments tell me how you, this story would end for you if you were updating it for the year in 2021 and also half the page is missing here but you get a lot of hot close-ups of making out in the rain it's pretty hot actually and then you go on to some uh, two-tone nylon seat cover. So you can go in the back seat with your with your special someone in neck. And we've got My Girl Pearl. So here's another cute blonde as per the course on these various comics. And um, this is, she's kind of a bit of an airhead and it goes back and forth about all of these hilarious jokes and the cop just keeps going crazier and crazier as Pearl just one-ups him effortlessly. In her with her comedy chops and then by the end the, the cop is ready to retire he's totally dumbfounded here's one of these classic draw me sort of challenges you may win a 375 dollars scholarship in professional art if you can draw like that okay here's the continuation of the story okay yeah there's the continuation of the story and you can see how it ended not how you thought it ended so pause that read it on your own more fun ads from back in the day. Then we've got Millie the model. More stories over here where the boss wakes everyone up very early. Everyone's very, very, very sleepy. We're all going to Hollywood tomorrow morning to start work on the Hanover model story. And everyone perks up, of course. That's a really fun shot right there. Everyone half falling asleep. No signs of coffee as we would have nowadays. No one's holding their Starbucks cup because it didn't exist at the time, kids. Also, cell phones didn't exist, so there's a landline. Although, is the yeah, the cord is missing. Whoops. This would have us believe that this is a wireless handset, but it's not. They forgot to draw the cord. Little curly cue thing. They go off to Hollywood. They fly a plane. They get to the studio. Everyone's snippy with each other. Well, mostly chilly. She's always really bitchy. I love her. And so then the plot ends that, yeah, we've got the big Hollywood starlet, but it's not who you think. Isn't that sweet? They chose his own mother. Yeah, sweet. And that ends. 
and more fun ads, learn to dance. He gets 2,000 glossy pictures for a dollar. And then one of these problematic ads from back in the day. Reduce, don't be fat, chew, improve formula, chewing gum, reduce up to five pounds a week, which I'm sure is full of deadly chemicals that was making you reduce because it's filling your body with radiation. So that's how things were back in the day, and unfortunately they still are to some degree, right? Preying on the insecurities of young people to make them be what they're not. Not cool. Millie the model, not cool. And then it ends with a one of these cash prize sort of thing. And there you go. That was my long, loving look at some vintage, golden age, teenager type of comic books. Some Archie comics and some Millie the Model comics from the 1950s. Drawn by Dan DiCarlo, written by Stan Lee and others. Personally, I think this is a really cool trip back to early comic books. Hopefully you enjoyed the video as well. Let me know if you'd like me to do more vintage comic books like this. I've got plenty. If you liked this video, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell, battle the Minotaur, do all the good stuff. If you really liked my comics, why not send me a dollar and be part of the VMC crew, just like you could be part of the Archie Comics crew back in the day. And you'll unlock perks and exclusives. Plus, you'll also keep me funded, you'll keep me motivated, you'll keep the channel going starting at $1. I would really appreciate it. If you can't pledge at the moment, simply like, comment, share, subscribe, do all the good stuff. Tell people about my channel because I create comic book related videos every single week. From cool memory lane type videos, review videos, first appearance videos, comic hauls, top 10 list, all that good stuff. And shorts, don't forget shorts. So you've got to subscribe. This has been the weekly VM Campus Comic Book Club, and I'll see you next time.